All right, I wanted to do a quick video. I guess some information has just leaked. NASA secret NASA plans were just leaked recently, and uh, we're going to fly back to the moon. Fly back to the moon? Wow, I don't think so. We haven't been to the moon yet. Oh, really? Do you think we went to the moon yet? Do you think in 1969 and 70 and whatever we went to that moon? I don't think so. What do you think? Put it in the comments. But here is the article that was just uh, published yesterday or today um, that supposedly was leaked. This wasn't supposed to get out. Somehow it got leaked. Uh, sometimes the alphabet agencies do this on purpose. Sometimes it just gets uh, leaked by accident. You just never know. So here's the story. NASA's full Artemis plan revealed 37 launches and a lunar outpost. So it's the Artemis plan. All right. So in nearly two months since Vice President Mike Pence directed NASA to return to the moon by 2024, space agency engineers have been working to put together a plan that leverages existing technology, large projects nearing completion, and commercial rockets to bring this about. Now, I know two months or so ago that uh, President Trump and it was just, no, it was Vice President Pence announced Space Force. They announced that they're creating a Space Force. You know, we got the Air Force, we've got Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, um, and um, the National Guard, and um, I can't think of the one that saves people. Who, what's the Navy uh, branch that goes out and saves you if you're drowning? I don't remember. Put it in the comments. Um, but Space Force is announced, and if you check, I'll put a link in the end of this video for my Space Force um, video. If you haven't seen it yet, check it out. But they did say, okay, last week, an updated plan that demonstrated a human landing in 2024, annual sorties to the lunar surface thereafter and the beginning of a new moon base by 2028. So what does that mean, a human landing in 2024? It must mean, uh, this isn't written very well, but I'm assuming it's a human landing in 2024 on the moon. All right. And, and, and after that, annual sorties to the lunar surface thereafter. In other words, sorties going back and forth to the moon. Um, and the beginning of a moon base by 2028, which means a permanent moon base. They want it there by 2028. And uh, these rumors began circulating within the agency. And, uh, I don't know, this is really written bad. Uh, I guess NASA, the NASA agency. A graphic shown below and uh, the graphic just is just a big graph. Um, let's see the graphic. I'm sorry, I lost my place. Graphic shown below provides information about each of the major launches needed to construct the small lunar gateway. Stage elements of a lunar lander there. Fly stage elements of a lunar lander there fly crews to the moon and back and conduct refueling missions boy this is written really bad I don't know who wrote this but it, they were very bad it must have been a foreigner just some foreigner it's horrible this decade-long plan which entails 37 launches of private and NASA rockets as well as a mix of robotic and human landers accumulates with a lunar surface asset deployment in 2028, likely the beginning of a surface outpost for a long duration cruise stays, stays developed by the agency's senior human space flight manager, Bill Gestenmeyer. This plan is everything Pence asked for, an urgent human return, a moose to the moon, a moon base, 
a mix of existing and new contractors. One thing missing is its cost. NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstein has asked for an additional $1.6 in fiscal year 2020. An additional as a down payment to start jumpstart lander development. But all the missions in this chart would cost much, much more. Sources continue to tell others that the internal projected cost is six billion to eight billion per year, on top of NASA's existing budget of about twenty billion. They've got a budget. NASA has a budget of twenty million, twenty billion with a B per year now. Now they want eight billion more for this. The plan also misses what is likely another critical element. It is not clear what role there would be on these charts for international partners, as nearly all the vehicles could and likely would come from NASA or U.S.-based companies. An international partnership, as evidenced by the International Space Program, Space Station Program, is likely key to sustaining a lunar program over the long term in the U.S. political landscape. Three miracles. Although the plan is laudable in that it represents a robust human exploration of deep space, scientific research, and an effort to tap water resources at the moon, it faces at least three big problems. So they're saying there is water on the moon. I think that's been established. The first issue is funding and political vulnerability. One reason Bridenstein has not shared the full cost of the program as envisioned is sticker shock that has doomed other previous efforts. What do you think? Do you think they should be spending $28 billion a year to fly out of the moon? Why? We've already got a huge deficit. You know, there's, there's educational things being cut all the time in schools. They can't even feed the kids in schools. In our own schools, a lot of our kids aren't getting what they should. Um, I know I don't believe in welfare, but if a family needs the money, yes, help them out. If they can, if there's a family with a breadwinner there that can work and he's not, then I don't agree with welfare. I think he should get a job. But if breadwinner's not there anymore or he's disabled somehow, then yeah, help him. I'm getting off on another subject, but the point is the money could be used for something else. Twenty-eight billion dollars a year to fly to the moon. Just see what, so you can have bragging rights and say, oh, I flew to the moon. And then are they really going to go to the moon this time? Because last time it was staged by Stanley Kubrick in a stage set, in a sound set. It was all staged. It wasn't even real. Check out my other videos with proof, 100% proof, that we never went to the moon in 1969. There's no way. It's impossible. And, you know, they don't even mention here about the Van Allen radiation belts. How are they going to go through that? This should be interesting, real interesting. It's going to be another Disney movie is what it's going to be. It's going to be, here's my prediction. Oh, we're going to go to the moon in 2024, 2028, whatever. Oh, yeah, really? It's going to be a, all a big CGI movie is what it's going to be. All fake, and it's going to cost you and me, the taxpayers, $28 billion to make a movie again. I am not happy with this. Do we need to go to the moon? I say, hell no. And if you agree, put it in the comments. If you don't, put it in the comments. Put put whatever you think uh, is right. But I don't think $28 billion is worth it. What are they going to do in the moon anyway? Bounce around? Grab rocks? I don't know. Helium-3? What's up there? I don't know. All right. NASA is going to attempt a moon landing. If NASA is going to attempt a moon landing with this specific plan, rather than a radical departure that relies on smaller reusable rockets... The agency will need a lot more money. So far, the White House has proposed paying for this with a surplus in the Pell Grant Reserve Fund. But this appears to be a non-starter with the House Democrats. The President is proposing to further cut a beneficial needs-based grants program that provides a lifeline to low-income students, namely the Pell Grants program, in order to pay for the first year of this initiative, something I cannot support. House Science Committee Chairman Chairwoman Eddie Bernice Johnson has said, okay, I do support Trump, but I don't agree with this. I got to agree with this other person here. 
cutting educational this or that shouldn't happen. There's $28 billion. Make it all private. Let Bezos or whatever the, that, that Amazon guy pay for it and the other guy, the Tesla guy. Those guys are so rich and they all want to fly to the moon. Let them go. You know what? Maybe you just let them use NASA facilities, use it, but they'll use their money and let them go to the moon if they want. If they want to waste all their money, they got so much money they don't even know what to do with it. Bezos just is not richer than than that that Microsoft guy, Bill Gates, which is insane. It's it's insane. If they want to waste their money to go to the moon, let them. Let's not waste the United States taxpayers' money, my money and your money, to do this and cut educational programs, which I believe are important. All right. Congress is also not going to give NASA an unlimited authority to reprogram funds with an apparently open-ended time frame, which Bridenstine has sought. A second problem is that NASA's current plan relies on its contractors to actually deliver hardware. Boeing's work on the core stage of the launch of the space launch system is emblematic of this problem. The company has been working on the core stage for eight years. It is unlikely to be ready for flight before another year or two. Boeing's management of the contract has been harshly criticized by NASA's Inspector General. After all this, after all this, can Boeing be counted on to deliver SLS core stage in 2020 and then in 2022 and six more between 2024 and 2028? I ask this. We've we supposedly already been to the moon in 1969. Why can't they use the old technology that they've already learned or figured out and just improve upon that? I don't know. Whatever. The big SLS rocket was supposed to have been fairly straightforward to develop as it relied on the space shuttle's components, such as its main engines and solid rocket boosters. By contrast, the three-stage reusable lunar lander envisioned by NASA to get humans from the gateway to the lunar surface will require new engines and systems including f fuel management at very low and very high temperatures in five years is five years enough time for this if it has taken NASA Boeing and the rest of the SLS contractors a decade to deliver just the rocket uh, finally NASA's architecture for a lunar return requires and they say return Oh, that's pushing it. For a re lunar return requires completion of a more powerful version of, of the space launch rocket, known as Block 1B, to be ready by 2024. In the new architecture, the SLS Block 1B booster carries a crewed Orion spacecraft to the gateway, along with surface logistics, likely air, food, water, and other consumables needed for a multi-day journey down to the surface and back to the gateway. So there's some gateway thing they're going to orbit around the moon and then be able to go to that and then go back and forth to the moon. I don't know. Unbelievable. The new technology is in the new tech, the key new technology in the Block 1B rocket is an upper stage known as the Exploration Upper Stage, for which Boeing is also the contractor. In recent months, NASA has urged Boeing to complete the initial version of the SLS rocket and halted work on the new upper stage. Giving Boeing's performance in the core stage, it's possible NASA may seek an alternative provider such as Blue Origin with its existing BE-3U upper stage engine to build the exploration upper stage. This is a big, this is a big task for Boeing, Blue Origin, or anyone by 2024. Well, Blue Origin, I believe that's Bezos. That's uh, Amazon Bezos. I think that's Blue Origin. But you can go ahead and put it in the comments. I'm not sure. Three outcomes. So what happens next? NASA took a key technical step Thursday in awarding contracts for two of the three elements of its proposed lunar lander design. The more dicey questions will come in the political arena. NASA is in danger of becoming a political football. Democrats are unlikely to support Pell Grants as a source of funding. Pell Grants cuts as a source of funding. And some space industry sources have speculated that 
This may have been a poison pill from the White House Office of Management and Budget to undermine a long-term costly program. If Democrats wanted to push back in a political way, they could tell President Trump they will only support NASA's lunar landing when the Department of Defense funds embarked for space force. Under such a scenario, the politicalization of NASA would be bad for an agency that is mostly flown above the partisan fray. And what happens if President Trump loses re-election in 2020? Not going to happen. By early, what's the other choice? Biden? Grabby Biden? Mr. Gropem Biden? That's your other choice? I definitely would rather take Trump than Biden. You go to Biden, you're going backwards. You're going back into time. We need to move forward. By early 2021, when a new administration moves in, I won't see such tangible evidence of a lunar return. The SLS rocket is unlikely to make its first flight. There will merely be some drawings on lunar landers, and the lunar gateway will remain a year or two away from launch. This would make the lunar program very vulnerable from a funding standpoint, especially if the new president is more concerned about climate change and earth science and wants to pivot towards a lower-cost space program that capitalizes on the launch successes of the new space industry. Finally, if the Trump administration wins and truly cares about the 2024 landing, giving the Given the anemic $1.6 billion budget supplement and tapping of the Pell Grants, it's far from clear it does. There is a path forward for NASA. Boy, that's written weird. With, with a more robust expenditure in, in fiscal year 2021 and some successes with the SLS rocket, it's possible that the agency could remain on a plausible path back to the moon. Back to the moon? funny. With this plan, it probably won't happen in 2024, as two sources told told us that the year 2026 is a more realistic date, even given the new sense of urgency. But at least there's finally a plan of record to debate. Well, check out my next, um, in a few seconds here, there's going to be links to the Space Force video. Why don't you watch that? Let me know what you think of this. First of all, do you put it in the comments. Do you think we went to the moon in 1969? Do you think it was staged or real? Have you ever studied it? There's tons of videos out there that have so much proof that we did not that it was staged. So, but on this video itself, what do you think? Do you think we should spend 28 billion dollars minimum just to go back to the moon for what? Why? If you know of a good reason to go back to the moon, or shh, I'm saying it myself, support, allegedly go back to the moon. If you know of a good reason to fly back to the moon, okay, fly, then put it in there. I'd like to hear it. I, I know of no reason to waste $28 billion plus to go back to the moon. And it kind of makes me angry. It makes me angry. So please share this video. Please uh, like it. Please subscribe if you haven't. And check out the links coming up for the other videos I have. I think you'll like them. Thanks very much. And we're signing off.